Do you have an ISP router like this one right over here which struggles and lacks performance and a lot of limitations? Then today we are going to replace it with one of these. There are multiple solutions but today we are going to take a look at one of the simplest ones but it will allow us to install software that will give us full control over our network devices without the limitations of ISP provided routers. Now we can even install extra software like AdGuard Home which will block ads and adds an extra layer of security. How does this work? Really simple. This router will keep on receiving the fiber optic in this particular case and I will connect one single cable here but it will not go to any of my devices. It will go to this NanoPi here on the one port and then there will be one cable connecting to the LAN which will distribute signal to all my network. Simple as this. And if you are watching this video on your Windows 10 or 11 computer and you still haven't activated and can't even edit your desktop icons, don't forget to check out cdksales.com where we can find budget official OEM keys at an affordable price and with the coupon code that you can see on screen and down below on the video description, it will get even cheaper. This device is called the NanoPi R6C. There are cheaper and more expensive models, but the main difference is the software that they can run. The key thing is that your device has to have at least two network ports. One one port, which will receive the internet from the ISP router, and one LAN port, which will distribute the network for our entire home. By default, the NanoPi comes with the OpenWRT pre-installed and that's what we are going to use today. Instead of logging into our ISP router, we will be logging into OpenWRT, gaining full access to advanced settings including network device monitoring, live hardware status and usage graphics, assigning fixed IPs really quickly and many more configurations. Some of them really simple but some of them more advanced. Today we are not going to dive in into OpenWRT. There are a lot of videos, a lot of tutorials, a lot of guides. So if you want to search a little bit more, just feel free to Google it. But it's really powerful and fun to use. But one of the features that I love is the possibility to install directly on OpenWRT Ad Guard. Home. And this will allow us to block unwanted ads across all the devices on our network with just one single click. Enhance security, enable parental controls. For example, we can block adult sites for the whole network, or I can do this device by device. We can also apply settings to the entire network with just one click, not only for parental controls, but also other options that we want. So if I want to block a particular site across all my network, I just need to select that and apply to all the network. And if I want to open an exception for one particular device that I have, I can do that and vice versa. So there is a lot of freedom of what we can do. But just by default, OpenWRT plus AdGuard Home without any configuration, we will have a lot of safety measures and a lot less intrusion on the devices that we have on our network. And probably you have seen on even a new installation here of AdGuard Home, we already have blocked a lot of DNS requests and a lot of ads on this installation. In case of the NanoPi R6C, besides OpenWRT as it has a great hardware system on a chip, we can also run, for example, Proxmox, or we can run Docker with OpenWRT at the same time. We don't need to choose that one. We can also run several Linux distros and even Android TV, which I believe that it's not meant for this device right over here. But I've done a more detailed video in the past about the NanoPi. I will leave a link down below so that you can check out how easy it is to swap operating systems. If we are going to use OpenWRT only, then there are cheaper models than the R6C available and I will leave a link down below. Just for curiosity, my network works like this. I do receive fiber optic on this router here, as I said, and then I will connect a cable to the port number four, which will give me bridge access to the router. So I will, doesn't matter the device that I connect, I will have a public IP address here and the public IP address here. So I will have two complete separate networks. And that's one of the things that you need to check out with your ISP. 
speak because we will have more freedom this way. It's not impossible to do in other ways, but this way is the best way to do it. Once I do have the cable connected from the router to the one port, I will then connect, as I said, a LAN cable or Ethernet cable here, which will go out to one of my switches. And then that switch will spread all the cables that I've got installed in my house. So on each of those cables I can connect one laptop or one computer via a direct cable. Now at this moment we are not talking about Wi-Fi because this device here doesn't have Wi-Fi and what I do I use access points on the places that I want. On the end of one of those cables I just need to connect one Ethernet cable right over here. For example, this is one of the latest devices that we have seen. This is a full-fledged router, but I'm only using as an access point because it has a grain range and a really cool design to have around the house. But I also use the Volo Powerline devices, which although I'm not using the Powerline feature, I'm using the access point feature. And this will depend on the size or the area that we have at our home. I will probably need one only if I've got a small area such as my office, for example. But in my house, three floor house, I do need several access points so that I do have Wi-Fi coverage. And probably your router already has Wi-Fi. So we are replacing one solution, which is basically for management. We are not replacing the Wi-Fi capabilities of this particular router. For that, my suggestion is the way that I use with devices like this one right over here, which is a router that we can use as an access point. But this doesn't mean that we can't use the Wi-Fi built-in from the router. I can still use it. The downside that I can see is that when we connect one of these devices, we will have two networks. I will have one network here with the public IP address and another network here. So if I connect devices here, like a network attached storage solution, for example, and then if I connect my laptop laptop via Wi-Fi to this one, I will not be able to get in as a LAN device because they are on a different network. And this is not bad at all. This is an advantage. This is not a disadvantage. But for example, if you just want to browse the web with your phone, then you will be able to keep on using the Wi-Fi from the router. The disadvantage is that you will not have all the protections that you will have on this side over here. So on one hand, we will need to invest a little bit more in devices such as this so that we we can have Wi-Fi, but on the plus side, we will have everything controlled right over here or here, 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 or there. This is just an example on how I do have my network. So hopefully this video was helpful in some way. And if it was, don't forget the usual thumbs up right over there, which is really appreciated on this side of the screen. My name is Roberto George, and as always, I'll see you on the next one.